Hi, I'm Tim Tyler and today I'll be discussing more popular misconceptions about memetics. This particular video will focus mostly on the views of those who accept the concept of cultural evolution but do not think that memetics is an appropriate model for it. Lamarckian inheritance is a problem for memetics. That inheritance in cultural evolution is Lamarckian was one of the issues that John Maynard Smith raised. Here is Stephen Pinker on the same issue. Stop being so literal minded, responded the fans of cultural evolution. Of course cultural evolution is not an exact replica of the Darwinian version. In cultural evolution the mutations are directed and the acquired characteristics are inherited. Lamarck, whilst being wrong about biological evolution, turned out to be right about cultural evolution. However, this will not do. Lamarck, recall, was not just unlucky in his guess about life on this planet. As far as explaining complex design goes, his theory was, and is, a non-starter. It is mute about the beneficent force in the universe, or all-knowing voice in the organism, that bestows the useful mutations, and it's that force, or voice, that's doing all the creative work. To say that cultural evolution is Lamarckian is to confess that one has no idea how it works. Lamarckian inheritance, which we will take to, the, to refer to the inheritance of acquired characteristics, did not offer an explanation of how acquired traits found themselves in an organism's genome. However, that is not to say that no such explanation could ever be found. The reason we don't have Lamarckian inheritance in conjunction with DNA is that the central dogma of molecular biology effectively prevents the phenotype from modifying the genotype. You can't unbake the developmental cake and recover the genotype from a given phenotype. However, these days the central dogma has broken down with the advent of genetic engineering. These days, if a woman likes to dye her hair red, she can engineer a red hair gene into her kids, if she wants to, by genetic manipulation. In the case of cultural evolution, intelligent agents can analyse how a genotype results in a phenotype. With such knowledge, they are able to turn modifications of the phenotype into changes in the genotype. For example, if it is found that people prefer cakes if they are chopped into smaller pieces, then the recipe can be changed so that smaller cake tins are used. We are not ignorant about how Lamarckian inheritance works in cultural evolution. On the contrary, we can see in considerable detail exactly how it works. Genes have a physical substrate, whereas memes don't exist except in people's minds. Memes do have a physical substrate. Any pattern of information must have some material instantiation. However, information can be stored in any physical medium. This is also true of genes. Genes exist in databases today as well as being instantiated in coils of DNA. Here is Daniel Dennett on the SU. What's a meme made of? What are bits made of, Mom? Not silicon. They're made of information. <coughs> can be carried in any physical medium. What's a word made of? Sometimes when people say, do memes exist? I say, well, do words exist? Are they in your ontology? If they are, words are memes that can be pronounced. Then there's all the other memes that can't be pronounced. They're different, different species of memes. The influence of design on ideas obliterates any inherited variation. The QWERTY keyboard is a good example of the power of inheritance. If you ask multiple teams to solve the problem of designing a keyboard from scratch, then each will produce a different key layout. Similarly, with the NATO phonetic alphabet, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and so on, there are many other possible phonetic alphabets, and the details of the one which we have are the result of numerous random choices. In very many cases, there exists a source of randomness and a historical tradition. In those cases, the influence of inheritance is often important. Culturally transmitted behaviours are not copied, they are reconstructed from observed behaviours. This is Eva Jablonka's primary objection to memetics, as expressed in Evolution in Four Dimensions. It seems to me to be a misunderstanding about what it means to copy something. Jablonka insists that to qualify as memetic transmission, copying should be development independent and learning independent. Why these conditions are imposed is not clear to me. However, Jablonka's position is often lumped together with that of Dan Sperber, which we will come to next. The existence of predispositions to ideas shows that there is something other than copying going on. Here is Dan Sperber. For memetics to be a reasonable research program, it should be the case that copying and differential success in causing the multiplication of copies overwhelmingly plays the major role in shaping all, or at least most, of the contents of culture. Evolved, domain-specific psychological dispositions, if 
there are any, should be at most a relatively minor factor that could be considered part of background conditions. That seems like a false dichotomy. In fact, psychological dispositions are one of the mechanisms by which differential success of memes is produced. Also, why is the possible role of mutations being neglected in Dan's caricature of mimetics? Selection is only half of evolution. The other half is the processes that generate variation. Selection can only choose between variants that are actually presented. Here is Dan Sperber again. Mimeticists have to give empirical evidence to support the claim that, in the microprocesses of cultural transmission, elements of culture inherit all, or nearly all, of their relevant properties from other elements of culture that they replicate. Now, exact and complete copying is quite common, for example, if you are copying a passage of text. However, Sperber wants to emphasise the cases where it does not happen. For example, where you laugh at the end of a joke to alert your audience to the fact that the punchline has been reached and a hero of that joke retells it but adds their own laugh rather than producing a detailed copy of yours. Memetics is concerned with what is inherited via copying. In the case of this example, what is copied is the idea of a laugh rather than the details of all the ha-has and ho-hos. Things that are not copied are not inherited and do not go on to play a role in any resulting evolutionary process. That does not mean that they don't exist or aren't important, just that their details do not persist as part of cultural inheritance. Similarly, in genetic evolution, hairstyles are not passed on via DNA. That doesn't mean that hairstyles don't exist, or that they aren't important, aspects of the phenotype. That genetics doesn't explain hairstyles does not invalidate genetics. Similarly, that imitation doesn't explain the detailed ha-ha and ho-hos of a laugh does not invalidate memetics. Sperber's claim about what memeticists have to demonstrate is based on his own straw man version of memetics, as far as I can tell. Here ends my list of memetic misunderstandings. Enjoy.